Hello everyone. Thank you for checking out today's video. In this episode of our ServiceNow Fundamentals series, we're going to be covering data sets on ServiceNow. Now, some of you may know that you can actually add up to five different data sets within a single report on ServiceNow. So it gives you the option to add in additional data to your reports. You're not having to create multiple reports um, for, for something that could probably fit within one. So Here's some of the examples that ServiceNow uses for the data sets. And it's only available on certain reports. So bar graphs, for example, that's probably the main one that people use it on. And yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about our use case for today. So I actually received a request at work and the user had a, um, a bit of an interesting ask. So what they were wanting is they were wanting to know, uh, it was actually five different reports, but one of them they were wanting to know all of the tasks that were created for them, for their team. So these are our SC tasks, these are change tasks, these are change requests, incidents. They were wanting to know how many were created for them within the last 24 hours, how many were created for them in the last seven days, how many were created for them in the last 30 days, how many in the last 90 days, and how many in the last 365, 365 days. So um, I, I guess I could have tried to do it without data sets, but it was just getting too convoluted and I wasn't getting the intervals that I wanted. So I, what I did is I ended up using data sets to section out each of those time intervals. And then I had different bars like this and each bar I had as a different color and it was very easy to read and I put data labels on there too. So we'll be doing something similar in this video today. So uh, I'm assuming you guys already know how to create reports, but in case you don't, if you just go to view, view slash run in your all apps menu, Click on view slash run, you'll be brought to this screen. Then if you click on create a report, go ahead and type this in. We'll do data set, YouTube test. And we're not doing a data source, we're doing a table. And we're doing the task table. It's gonna be alphabetical order. There we go, task. Okay, like I mentioned, it's only available on certain reports. So once you click on the port, report that you want, so in my case, I'll use the bar graph. Um, if you come over, you may have to save it and then reload the page. Let's see, save, there we go. Yep, so as soon as we save it, we get this little icon right here. Um, looks like a hierarchy. And when you click on it, it actually gives you a report structure. And then you have these different options. So you'll have drill down, you also have data set. So for us, let's go ahead and build out our first data set. So it'll actually be on the initial report. So we want to group it by active. So that's fine. We can leave that. We don't need to stack it. Um, we could put a data table if you want, but it's only going to show for the first set, the first data set. So it's kind of pointless if you have five different ones on there. Um, for style, we want to display the number in the center like that. Nice. Okay, now let's build out our condition. So we're only looking for active. So let's look for active is true. And let me, uh, I don't think this is gonna work actually. Well, you know what, we, we can do it like this. So the reason I was thinking we can't do it is because on our incident table, if we go over to it, you can see almost all the dates are the same, so it'd be kind of pointless. Um, we have some from May, some from April, but pretty much everything is gonna fall on July 11th. So the numbers aren't gonna differ very much, but I guess I could just run through the process and you guys can kind of see how it works. So let's do pretty much what I did for him as I was looking for active as true on that report. And then you're looking for the assignment group. So assignment group is, and then we'll just put software, and we'll also look for, we'll do updated actually, because the created dates are from like years ago. So we'll do created on, we'll do at or after, and we'll do yesterday. So essentially 20, little over 24 hours. Okay, so we had 31 updates. So that's our first data set. So let's go ahead and save it. Next, we'll come over here to add data set. I don't know if I'm gonna do all these because this will take a long time, but seven days. Task. Okay, configure. The group by does have to be the same. Keep that in mind. 
Then we'll do the same thing with the data labels. We'll have that appear on here. And then we'll just pretty much set the same conditions. So we'll do active as true and do assignment group. Oops. Assignment group is software. And updated. So we'll do at or after last seven days. So anything within the last at seven days or within the last seven days will show up on here. So we have 31. And then we'll just do another one for like 365. So, and then also we have to name our data set here. So we'll do 24 hours, save that. Okay, so you can see these at the bottom. So each one of our data sets that we made and let's actually go over to our seven day and we're gonna change the color because right now you, it's too hard to see what the color is. And we could do this one as, um, what do you guys think? I already have a teal, maybe a darker color, like a dark blue. And then you'll see kind of starts the dude. What if we do color palettes? Let's try that. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I'm not sure why it set both of these to the same color. Usually if you do single color, um, it'll be unique to each data set. But um, I don't care enough to look to see why that wasn't the case for this video out of scope. So let's go ahead and select 365 days or let's do 365. Yeah, 365 days is fine for the data set name. That's pretty clear. So we do task. And then we set our conditions just like we did for the other one. So we do active is true. And assignment group is software. And updated. So we'll do at or after. I don't know if we want to do last year because I think that shows like all of last year. So we probably want to do relative and then we can set the actual amount of days. So we would go like this. We would select relative after days 365 or I guess you could do 366 because then anything after 366 would fall on here. Okay, run. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and set our data label in the middle, middle and we'll also change our color. There we go. See, that's what I meant. So it shouldn't have changed this one when I changed this one to a different color. Um, yep, but you can see now we have our new unique green color. And because we have 24 hours, seven days, 365 days, you can see that we have three different data sets that are going to have a different amount that's going to appear on here. And this is really neat. I'm, I find this helpful because if you just click on any one of these bars, it's going to show all of the associated tasks, at least in this case, all the associated tasks with that particular bar. So I'm sure you guys could maybe find some um, some use cases that maybe make a bit more sense than the one that I was asked uh, that was asked of me or the one that we tried to do in the video today. But I just wanted to give you guys the um, first off the um, the knowledge that is this is something that you can do. So it's very helpful. So don't create more work for yourself. Check to see if the data sets are an option on the reports that you're creating. Because if your instance is anything like mine or your workplace is anything like mine, you're constantly getting hit up from people. You know, how do I create this report? How do I create that report? And you could try to show them, but usually they don't want to take the time to learn how to build reports. They just want you to do it for them. So finding the most efficient way to build reports is definitely going to save you a lot of time in the long run. All right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. And now that you're aware that data sets are a thing and how you can build them out and um, hopefully improve your report building going forward. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing to the channel. Catch you on the next one very soon.